Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to the Ben Heck Show. In today's episode, we're going to be continuing work on the Novena Custom Hackers laptop. So last time you and Felix spoke with the creators of the Novena laptop, and then you got the operating system installed and running. Right, we know everything works, so in this episode we're going to build upon that and start making our custom laptop solution. All right, well, what's the first step? Well, we put all the parts onto a piece of paper, we start drawing around it to figure out the shapes. Then Felix has this crazy custom keyboard he wants to build. Yeah, I mean, it seems a little hardcore, but, you know, more power to him. Once we have that figured out, we can actually design the entire shape around it because the keyboard is fairly large. It'll be a driving factor in the design. Um, then we can start routing parts to actually make it look like something. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. How can we make this portable? Inspired designs. I am the internet troll. Regrettable acting. Them hatches. Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. In this episode, we're going to figure out how to actually put the Novena laptop together. So we have some paper, all the components, including this keyboard. Do you want to talk about the keyboard briefly? Yeah, this is the Phantom... PCB. Mm -hmm. I got it from mechanicalkeyboards.com. Um, I called him up because I wanted to make sure I got all the right parts for this DIY keyboard and uh, some dude named Justin answered and he made sure I got everything that I needed and it was pretty cool. Yeah, so um, it uses, I ordered these Cherry MX keyboard or keys. I got Mechanical the, Cherry switches, those yeah. must have been quite dear. Yes, um, yes indeed. I got the black ones because I, I kind of like like how they feel. Yeah, you had a sampler pack so you mm -hmm. can, you know, check what the force was on them, right? Yeah. And this is a metal frame for it? Yeah, so um, the keys or the buttons will sit down on here. Mm -hmm. And then this frame sits on top of it so that it can have some rigidity and be oh, that quite stable. Sense. Yeah, we couldn't make a laser cut metal frame like this here, so that's good. How are they matrixed? How do you connect this to a computer? Well, there's the... Uh, Oh, it comes with a teensy? Yeah, on the on the board right here, there's a, there's a spot oh, sweet. for it. Yeah. So as you may or may not know, a teensy microcontroller is basically a USB device, so it's really easy to turn it into a keyboard or a mouse or a game controller. Yeah. It's the best microcontroller to use if you're doing that for hobbyist purposes. Then I got these black keycaps. Oh, cool. Do you have one for every key? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's oh, actually... Do these light up? They seem like there's a translucent number yeah, on them. Yeah, there's a... Let me get my laser. <laughs> and these cherry switches have a little spot on them where I could put a three milliliter light emitting diode. However, this PCB isn't designed to handle that, so it would take a little bit of customization to get them on there. But it's um, You know one thing to think about? This is gonna be battery powered, right? Yeah. These LEDs would actually add up to a not insignificant drain of power. Right. We could put a switch to turn it on or off. Okay. Well, one thing we could do is you could put, you could wire them all in series along mm -hmm. a line and then have one larger resistor for okay. multiple LEDs. That would save a little time. I guess I would leave that up to you if you're willing to do the extra work it would require. I'm more than willing to do it. Maybe we could do a soldering montage of it. Well, people do love soldering on the show. <laughs> and I think having a backlit LED keyboard is worth the, worth the effort. And we have the keys. Mm -hmm. We gotta go all out. I've started to design the keyboard area into Fusion 360. I haven't gotten too far, I've made a couple sketches. Um, I'm representing the keyboard PCB and a frame around it, as well as the keyboard itself. Again, I'm not drawing it in too much detail because we only need the amount of detail that'll actually allow us to build this. One thing I did add were these uh, magnetic risers. Turn them on here. So what I'm thinking is we put some neomidium rear earth high power magnets in them. And then we can use these to lock the keyboard in place. And I made some marks on the actual keyboard as to where they go. So if we center them on the marks and then glue them to the edges, they will be in the same positions as the drawings I have on the computer here. And I have those all labeled. So I just take these measurements and I manually draw them here 
to apply the buttons. Happy little glue. I guess I was inspired by uh, Felix's new Surface tablet. Everything is magnetic on it. And I'm like, wow, how can I get a piece of that magnet action? The answer is this. Now I didn't just randomly pick these places. I picked areas around the corners or as close as I could get where it would not intersect with the switches. And then there's just enough space between the PCB and the metal frame to hold the magnet. Um, it's about an eighth of an inch. So what'll happen is you can just click this into place or pull the magnets loose to put it someplace else. I'm kind of designing this from the keyboard out because the keyboard is kind of large, therefore it dictates a lot of the design. So I'll finish gluing these up and then I'll continue my design. We got this phantom keyboard from mechanicalkeyboards.com. This thing's really great. And uh, we have these Cherry MX switches from Mechanical Keyboards also. And uh, they support a lighting mini diode in here. And I wanna put these in so we can light up the keyboard. But we got the three millimeter LEDs, which is what we need. However, these ones that we have have a little bit of a lip on them. So we're gonna need to mod the switch to get them to fit properly. And to do that, I'm going to snip them with this little snips. There's a little lip here we can cut out. And also, you might have a little bit of trouble putting the switches on the board with these diodes because the board isn't designed to support diodes. So what we'll have to do is bend them over and solder them all separately. And also another challenge that we're gonna have to get through is that the switches are designed to mount into this face plate, right? So we'll have to mount these on here Make sure they line up with the PCB, then solder on the LEDs. I'm gonna have six rows in series. Put the faceplate with the switches and the LEDs wired together onto the PCB and solder them. But before we can do any of that, I first have to solder all these 1N4148 diodes onto the PCB. And there's 97 switches. So there's 97 diodes and there's 97 switches. There's 97 light emitting diodes and six resistors. I think there's also a few resistors that we got to put on the board on the PCB as well. And then make sure we have the teensy soldering on here as well. Now, there is some questions as to whether I'll be able to maintain my sanity during all of this soldering. And we shall see. To assemble the Phantom keyboard, I had to first install all of the diodes. I put them in place and soldered one lead on the component side, flipped it over, trimmed the leads, and soldered them both on the solder side. After installing the diodes, I fixed the keys to the mounting plate, and then I put in the light emitting diodes. After placing the light emitting diodes, I soldered six rows of LEDs in parallel. After soldering the LEDs, I fixed the microcontroller to the PCB. I had to make sure that it laid flush and that the leads didn't go too far through the PCB and interfere with the switches. After I had the microcontroller in place, I then sandwiched the mounting plate to the PCB with the switches. I had to make sure that leads from the switches went through all the holes on the PCB, and then I soldered them in place. So what we want to look at now is how the keys are actually scanned. They're in a matrix, and what they do is they have a column and a row, and the row is an input and the column is an output. And whenever a column is inactive, it's high. When it's active, it's low. So therefore, if a column is active and you push a key, the low allows the input key to sink through the diode to ground, and then we know that key has been pressed. Now you have LEDs on every one of these keys? Yes. Okay. So what I'm concerned about is if we turn on all the LEDs at once, it will consume too much current. Mm -hmm. um, if this is a USB device, we can only get about 500 milliamps, guaranteed. So what I think we should do is run the LEDs one row at a time, like cycle them. Okay, yeah. All right, so I'm gonna hook up one line at a time. So here's the next column. Okay, let's separate these on the scope. If you look, you can see how one occurs first and then the other one occurs after it. See that? Yeah. They're right in a row. Obviously there are more channels than this, but we just wanna show the difference between each channel. There we go, we can see them all down the line. Yeah, that's cool. That's so nice. those are the active signals for columns eight, nine, 10, and 11. So what I'm thinking, Felix, is we can use these to trigger um, Darlington transistors mm -hmm. to power the entire row at a time. Okay. So we can use a low voltage, such as what's doing the keyboard matrixing, to control a higher voltage. Right. Yeah. One thing though, if we put them all in a row like this, mm -hmm. 
it's not going to be spread out very well. Yeah. You know, this will happen, this will be like the last fifth of the entire cycle. Mm -hmm. So I think it might be better to actually get signals from like zero, three, six, nine, just so yeah. it's actually spread out. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, there's going to be a wider amount of time where nothing is lit. Right. Uh, yeah, so we just need to find six test points from zero to 11. Uh, wire them up and we should get a better spacing. Okay, we've spread out the connections. Um, I have four channels attached. So here's one, two, three rows of the keyboard. And then here's the last row. Those are the, what our four channels can see. Um, there'd be rows uh, four and five right here. So the spacing's a lot better now. Yeah. So this sheet shows what we did. There are 17 columns that drive the keys. So on column zero, three, six, nine, 12, and 15, we're going to activate a row of lights that will space it out evenly and also keep the LEDs from drawing too much current. So the next step, Felix, will be to wire up some Darlington transistor arrays to actually drive them. That sounds exciting. I'm affixing six Darlington pair transistors to the PCB. They will be used to drive the rows of LEDs. The transistors will be activated by the microcontroller as it queries for key presses. Okay, Felix finished wiring up the PNP Darlington transistors for the keyboard lights. How did that make you feel? That, I, I feel like I've accomplished something right. very amazing. It so, was a lot of fun too. Okay, so there's six rows, so you've mm -hmm. got six transistors, and as it's driving the column sense, it actually activates these, turning on the lights. Can we get a demo? Yeah, that'll all be right. fun. Plug okay. it in. So yeah, the LEDs appear to be all on, but they're technically not. There's only one row on at a time, but our pathetic human eyes can't detect that. I bet Quicksilver could see. Who? Quicksilver. Oh, from X-Men? Yeah. Okay, I thought you meant Shadowfax, the horse from Lord of the Rings. So these are the magnetic mounts I made for right. when it's in the case. So these made up with the magnets inside the unit. And do you have a key on one of them? <laughs> well, one of them I put in backwards, so yes. All right. So these these four discs will sit in the Novena cool. laptop. So they'll hold it in place and then when you lift it up, well, I mean, it's easy to pull one out, but if you try to pull all four, mm -hmm. it's gonna be a little bit more difficult. So it'll be like, whoop. And then you pull the keyboard out and then you put it down here. So you can put it wherever you want. It'll open up the Novena to allow air flow over the mm -hmm. chips and also you can plug into the yeah. FPGA and whatnot. That's gonna be pretty cool. Uh, um, how about we do this? Um, the back of this is a little mushy. Yeah. I Why don't that. you get some Guess what? Funky Funky foam. Foam. Yep. And uh, see if you can space this out, just add a few layers wherever you can. Using the laser cutter, we cut a black acrylic top for the Novena unit. We then cut pieces out of white plastic to inset where the logo is going to go. The backlight on the LCD should cause these to illuminate nicely and look like your standard fancy laptop. Once that's done, we apply black vinyl onto the front of the case to make it look nice, and then finally sandwich the LCD itself between the two layers for strength and rigidity. Okay, we've built the standalone keyboard module with the feet and everything. And then this is the screen portion of it. So now we know the shape that we're gonna use for the unit. We did these two things first because they kind of drive everything else. They're the largest components by a long shot. So I made this on the laser cutter. It's a pattern of where we are. There are a few things we can't change, such as the position of the magnet mounts here, and the hinges obviously have to be in this location. I made some marks so we know where to put the motherboard. So let's just put these real components onto the computer drawings and make sure they match. This cable looks a little bulky, but we should be able to fold it over and make it work. Now the fan, as we talked about in episode one, the heat sink can get pretty warm. So we want the fan to blow on it directly as possible. However, that means the battery pretty much has to be here because the battery can't be here uh, because it would hit the fan and it would also hit this magnetic latch. Of course, if we put it here, it's gonna hit two magnetic latches. 
What we'll probably have to do is actually increase the thickness of the unit enough so that the magnetic latches have room over the battery. But a bonus of that is that we can create a storage compartment in it to put all your components for hacking. And the hard drive here should fit just below this GPIO header. That's just barely enough. I'll probably put some insulation under it just to make sure it doesn't interfere. And then our fan, there'll be, a, actually the fan will be like this because it'll be in the bottom of the unit, pulling in air through the bottom and then blowing it across the RAM and the main ARM chip. So some of the patterns have already been laid out. The things that haven't been laid out, I'm gonna manually mark them, and then I can take these measurements and draw them into the computer so the things in the computer match the layout of the real objects on this pattern. Okay, so what I'm gonna do next is translate these lines into the computer and then make another paper pattern to see how we did. Now I'm routing out the sound bar that will go at the base of the Novena laptop. It has a hollow portion in the center to hold your spare parts and a speaker on either side. Well, Karen, this is our progress so far with the Novena Hacker Laptop. All right, well, what do we have here? Well, we started this episode by getting the keyboard put together. Felix wanted to use this fancy DIY mechanical keyboard called the Phantom Keyboard. So we started it up and he also put LEDs onto every individual key. And then we made a circuit so that the LEDs wouldn't consume too much power. That's a lot of LEDs. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, I thought Felix was gonna go insane wiring it, but apparently he didn't. Uh, anyway, we made this as its own solid unit so it can detach from the laptop, giving you access to the insides of it, and also you can just put this wherever you want. This has got a USB connection there. Okay, so it would be wired? Yeah, and okay. knowing what this is allowed us to design the rest of the case because this is, you know, it's kind of thick, it's fairly wide, so this was kind of the basis of everything. So once we knew what this was gonna be like, we could design the screen. Mm -hmm. So this holds the thin Novena screen. We just gave it enough extra material to make it, you know, not bend. There's a light up logo. Yeah. Neat. 3D printed hinges right here. Mm -hmm. We'll attach those in part three. Yep. Nice. And then down here we have, this is basically just a large block. Okay. That holds the hinges and has the power button that we scavenged from the MacBook. And I'll just give it some stability for the screen and... Yeah, um, usually I try to hollow these things out to have components or make the weight less. But here, um, if the hinges are bending against this, you might cause it to distort. So we want to make that nice and solid. We can put nice and nice long screws in. Then down here, this is a removable sound bar. So it's magnetic as well. So you lift it up and it comes off <gasps> and then it reveals, yeah, that's going to be a component box. Mm -hmm. Yes, that holds things that you might need in order to connect to the Novena. Secret hacker compartments. Yeah, if we have room for more secret hacker compartments, I'll definitely put them in. So we have completed part two of the Novena hacker laptop. What are we gonna do in part three? Well, we're gonna create an aluminum base. The Novena will attach to that along with the hard drive and the battery and the hacker compartment. There'll be a customized panel along the back for the connections. Um, any other secret compartments that we can fit, I'll definitely try to get in there. Then we'll take that, attach it to this, and finish assembly. So we're pretty close. All right. So remember, you can read about this project and other upcoming episodes, builds, and special events at elna14.com forward slash TBHS. We'll see you next time. Spending so much time in Illustrator, designing Yay. STL files. The dinosaur jumped into a volcano, huh? It was just like, screw this. <laughs> I will take the ring to Pangea. So in part three of the Novena laptop, I should probably talk to Karen about that. So yeah. The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com.